So halogen alkanes are really useful uh, chemicals and we use them a lot in synthetic roots and in a lot of substances. However, they have had quite a dramatic effect on our environment and you may have heard about the effect that they've had on the ozone layer. So the ozone layer is a layer of uh, gas, um, ozone gas, which is O3, in the upper atmosphere, which protects us from ultraviolet rays which are coming to us from the sun all the time. Um, and the way it works is that uh, constantly ozone is being formed by oxygen molecules reacting with oxygen atoms to create ozone. And then ozone will interact with the UV rays coming from the sun, um, so those red arrows, to break down to give O2 and oxygen. And this is an equilibrium, uh, so it's happening the whole time. And as long as we have a certain concentration of O3 in the upper atmosphere, uh, we are protected from ultraviolet rays on Earth. So ozone is really useful for us, and it's unlikely that without it, uh, life would uh, be able to um, exist on Earth. Uh, the ozone layer prevents a number of things, uh, skin cancer in humans and uh, animals, um, also, uh, it uh, stops our immune system um, being affected by ultraviolet and it also protects plant life um, and uh, also uh, a reduction in the growth of uh, psychoplankton uh, which endangers the food chain and a decrease in aquatic life. So ozone is a great little molecule to have around in the upper atmosphere. You don't actually want it at lower uh, levels, so you wouldn't want ozone in your house or breathing it in. It's not it's very good for you, uh, but in the upper atmosphere, it does us a great deal of good. So what's gone wrong? Well, a few years ago, um, scientists discovered that the ozone layer was actually thinning, and uh, this was leading to an increase in skin cancer in humans, and it was particularly noted that it was happening in the polar regions here. Um, and so areas like Australia, um, where obviously it's very sunny, people spend a lot of time outdoors and was an area affected by thinning ozone, uh, skin cancer shot up. So that was where we had two holes in uh, the polar regions, but across the whole of the globe, the ozone layer was getting thinner. So there was something that was happening to O3 that was breaking it down um, uh, and it couldn't be reformed fast enough to stop the ultraviolet rays getting down to Earth. So scientists discovered this uh, breakdown in ozone was due to an increase in human use of CFCs. Uh, CFCs are chlorofluorocarbons. So it's a carbon atom bonded to fluorine and also chlorine. And it's also due to nitrogen oxides. So where these chlorofluorocarbons came from, um, mainly through uh, aerosol deodorants and also through refrigerators. Um, chlorofluorocarbons were, when they were discovered, were thought to be great because they were non-toxic, uh, you couldn't smell them, um, they were non-flammable, uh, so really safe to use, you could use them you know, even for fire extinguishers, um, so nobody thought they were doing us any damage at all, and they weren't doing our any immediate damage, but once they got into the upper atmosphere, as uh, some chemistry was happening, which was causing uh, the whole of the Earth some damage. Nitrogen oxides are formed naturally through thunderstorms, uh, but the increase had occurred because of the increase in aircraft um, engines, uh, aircraft flying around the world, and they produced nitrogen oxides from their engines. So these reactions were occurring through free radical substitution, uh, which you remember we looked at when we looked at alkanes. So, uh, the initiation step was my chlorofluorocarbon was going up into the upper atmosphere. And in the upper atmosphere, it was uh, reacting with the UV light. Um, and it was dissociating into two free radicals. Um, one uh, with the uh, unpaired electron on the carbon. Uh, but you produced a chlorine free radical here. Now, of course, once you've got a, a free radical, they can do a lot of damage. So we then start looking at propagation steps. So we have our two propagation steps. 
So the first one is our chlorine free radical meets a molecule of ozone, takes an oxygen away from it to form ClO um, as a free radical and also oxygen gas. So that's one step of taking ozone to form oxygen. And then in step number two, our ClO free radical here meets an oxygen atom um, to reproduce the chlorine free radical and another molecule of oxygen gas. So yet again, uh, we have produced oxygen but have destroyed the process by which we can form ozone. And uh, even worse, perhaps, is that we have regenerated, as we would with propagation steps, our free radical uh, Cl- minus um, here, so it can go through the steps again. So overall, uh, we are destroying ozone um, uh, to give us oxygen. And through that um, process, the uh, concentration of ozone was decreasing, and therefore more ultraviolet rays were getting down to Earth. Uh, the reaction with NO uh, as a free radical is very similar. Uh, rather than Cl dot, we use NO dot, um, but it's exactly the same process and the overall equation is exactly the same. And in fact, in order to uh, save some revision for you, you can just learn uh, this summary reaction where R is either equal to Cl dot or NO dot. Uh, it doesn't matter. And then you just learn uh, these uh, steps here these propagation steps, um, and you can substitute R um, for either Cl or NO, um, and it will work out for you. So once this was discovered, there was a great deal of panic, and the C use of CFCs decreased considerably around the world, um, and so they're no longer used in aerosols or refrigerators. The good news is that the ozone layer is recovering, uh, but it will take a long time to do this, uh, one reason, of course, is because those free radicals don't just disappear. They keep uh, destroying ozone for a long time before they will uh, finally uh, undergo a termination step with two free radicals coming together. Um, uh, but also, we've still got old uh, fridges being dumped and they leak CFCs into the atmosphere. Um, and those CFCs that have been around, it takes a long time for them to slowly work their way up into the upper atmosphere uh, where they then carry on destroying the ozone. So it will be quite a while before it's back to normal, but the good news is that through uh, scientists identifying this, we were able to take action and it is recovering. So that gives us a little bit of hope for global warming as well. So please feel free to download the slides if you like um, uh, from the website, uh, and that will hopefully uh, help your notes for when you come to revise for those exams.